Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the big picture with Jeannie at Historic Sodderly. Uh, it was quiet and then right on cue, uh, all my friends came. I have a couple of different kinds of air traffic, but here's some good air traffic around here too. So there's a, some bumblebees. Um, they don't bother me, they just hover around. Uh, they get pretty close, so I'll try to take a picture of them when uh, when I can. Um, I'm sitting in front of our visitor center and this is where you would start and get uh, any uh, literature you need. Uh, uh, when you come on site we're still practicing social distancing. Our grounds are open regular hours 10 to 4, 12 to 4 on Sunday. Um, so you're welcome to come and walk around. We're you know part of that open space and encouraged exercise thing, so we're all good. Um, you're welcome to comment. You are welcome to uh, talk to each other, uh, respond, react, uh, whatever you want to do um, is perfectly fine. I'll be, um, hi Martina. Um, welcome Martina. Hi, Angela. So I have my, I have some regular. So you're welcome to do all of that. I might do some impromptu polling too today. So uh, with, with your, to get your opinion on a few things. So be prepared for that. Um, in this format, I, um, I need to remember that it's hard to remember when I get into it, but I need to remember that um, I have to reintroduce myself every once in a while for those that join late. This will be recorded, so if you need to go back and look at it again, you're perfectly welcome to do that. Uh, today we're talking about seeing signs. Uh, nothing mysterious about that. We're going to look at the signage, walk around site and see the signage, uh, the interpretive signage mainly, but also I'm going to talk about wayfaring. So I've got a little air traffic going. It wasn't raining, wasn't supposed to rain, but I felt a few sprinkles, but that's okay. I can roll with it. As you know, I taught eighth grade, so I pretty much can do whatever. I can do anything. <laughs> That's what I always say. Um, so here is the visitor center. So I am going to uh, change my direction here. And now you should be able to see everything fine when I point the camera. That sh you should be able to read that, right? <laughs> Hi, Meredith. Do I have it right this time? I know, I know, I drove you crazy last week. Just let me know. Uh, Catherine Humphreys is also helping me today respond to you all. And Catherine, no, there are no re special resources today. Uh, I don't have any, so you don't have to worry about that. Hi, Beth. Good to see you. All right, Beth is an old friend. All right. So here's my first poll, okay? It says here that uh, smoking permitted in designated areas only. So I'm gonna say a little poll. I'm gonna be devil, devil's advocate. I'm not gonna tell you which way I prefer. Uh, what would you like to see? Uh, totally non-smoking or smoking permitted and designated? What's your opinion? Uh, I don't want you to get in an argument with each other. I just want to know your opinion. I think that's good to know. I think we need to ask the public sometimes what we need to do. So this is the parking lot, of course. Uh, I'm going to go around back and show you the signage in there. Uh, this is a wayf wayf wayfaring sign, so we have some of these. This is this is already um, needs to be changed because we we're trying to simplify some things. Uh, I think that's one thing that we learned from the pandemic and all the things that we have to adapt to is we want to simplify it as much as possible. But it tells you it, it does have the right place where you are. You're at the visitor center, of course. Dennis Kuhn is our sign master uh, fabrication. 
Very good. And that's a thing too. So if you want to support us and help us have good signs and up-to-date signs and nice signs, sometimes they get damaged or sun damaged. Um, that, that can be a gift. So ask Jane about that. Okay. All right, I'm going to walk now. You can see that everything's bloomed out. So you can even see a little bit of the water from here. My helicopter's in the background. So I'm, I am now walking to the back of the visitor center. This is where when the bathrooms are open, <laughs> this is where the bathrooms are. Um, this sign is one we repurpose, but it is not correct. So this is another wayfaring sign that needs to be, um, a new sign panel needs to go on here because this is taken from somewhere else. So it says you are here and it says the pier. Okay. So we are not at the pier. <laughs> so this is one of that needs one and it has our old logo. So it needs to be redone. Okay. So I'm going to go back. So you see, this is the back of our visitor center. And we're going to do a little history. This is the first sign in the back of the visitor center. And maybe we need to rethink where these are placed too, uh, because now we enter from the front. So this is, this is where they, people go to the bathroom. You can see one, one good thing about it being here. You can see can you can you hear me <laughs> i've got a competition you can see where the old farm system used to be this is where there was a halt i even waved at him while ago but he's still not going away hello hello <laughs> just a second just look some of you can tell me what these buildings are you already know so i can't talk right now <laughs> If you're just joining us, I'm Jeannie Pirtle and I'm doing uh, the big picture. This one is about our signage. Seeing signs is what it's called. It's clever, huh? Okay, so this used to be a big farm system with a lot of buildings uh, that no longer uh, are here anymore. This is, we call this the creamery here. That's part of the old farm system. And the shed over here, that's part of the old farm system. The turkey shed used to be here. Um, so all of this has changed. There used to be a water tower. So let me show you some of this signage. And hopefully you can read this. Um, so the Knott family, uh, this is this the old part of the house let me show you from the outside so the old part of the house and this is what signage does it it puts you in the right direction it tells you what you're you're going to see and what you need to kind of explore so this is the old part it faces wharf road as you see there's the wharf road sign right over there um, this is the oldest part of this house in, in 1910 so did anybody go look at some old pictures of Sodderley and some of their homework I gave you so this is part of the old uh, not house. And then they, they grew a big family too. So they keep kept adding on to it. And this used to be a porch out here that we enclosed for the visitor center. And it became the visitor center right before I got here in 2010, really. Um, it didn't uh, happen to, I, I, it wasn't the visitor center very long before I arrived. So not pretty recent history. So the Knott family. So Charles Knott. Um, this is Charles Knott on the, the porch that we just looked at facing Wharf Road of his 1910 house that Herbert Satterley built. And um, it explains about uh, the Knott house. That's India Knott with um, Charles's wife with um, turkeys, used to raise turkeys here. And she was a busy lady, busy, busy, raising a family and helping on the farm and cooking and watching children, a very busy lady, writing letters for her husband. Okay, 
and then um, uh, Charles Knott um, was uh, came here in um, 1910 and he was worked at Sodery for 60 years and here's some old pictures of our current barn okay so you get you get vintage pictures you get explanations and you can read in depth um, or uh, just you know chase chase uh, squirrels and go uh, what to what interests you so there's a nice picture of uh, picking strawberries mm -hmm. Uh, it says 19, about 1930. So that's Richard there standing up. And you see um, people picking strawberries. And my mom had a strawberry patch that she had people come and pick too when I was growing up. So I'm, I have a thing for strawberries. Sentimental thing. I love them too. And here's some folks holding a line of fish. That's, I believe that is Richard Knott too. Yes, it is. You can read it on the sign. Awesome. So it gives you some, some information. Um, hopefully we'll get that one replaced soon. Uh, if you're just joining me, I'm Jeannie Pirtle and I'm doing a science tour today at Hearth Historic Sodderly. So comment, introduce yourself, talk to the other people. Some old equipment, farming equipment. Um, and that path leads up to the back of the barn. Okay, you see that's the, the warehouse and we'll be going past that for some more signage. It is a lovely day. Um, a lot of insects out, a lot of, uh, yes, and I, I already sprayed for unwanted guests because it's that time of year too. Uh, but um, birds, you can hear birds. It's really nice if you just sit. Like we have some picnic tables set out and pretty much distanced apart. So you could bring your, your own lunch and come out and enjoy. So, of course, the barn. And there is, inside the barn, there's also some interpretive signage, but we're concentrating on our site signage today. So I'll pick up my pace just a little bit because I don't want to keep you all day, even though it's fun to be here all day, if you're outside. I get up from my computer and walk around a little bit. It reminds me why I work here. And you can see that if you missed it last time because of my uh, ineptitude, uh, that is the what the museum calls the warehouse. It used to be part of the farming system. It was always used as a stable. Uh, and that is an 18th century structure. Last week we covered the corn crib over there. Can you see? It's a little dark in my view. Um, exhibit in there, land lies and labor. Nice. The offices back there. I'm going toward, uh, and in the warehouse also, we have an exhibit inside, Saving History, the Urgency of Preservation. So on a day that's not going to be so weather friendly, I'm going to go in there and do um, a program about that exhibit and talk about things, museum things. So, um... You only worry about, you know, we have we have systems, right, electricity and all that, and you only uh, notice that it's there and it's an eyesore when you're trying to do a historically accurate film. <laughs> it really sticks out then. All right, I brought my, this is something that happens. These are, un, this sign is under a Gatalpa tree, a southern Gatalpa. They're very messy trees and they leave residue, so I brought my you know, I, I'm not going to come out here twice when I can do it all at once, right? I'm going to try to get some, I will need some cleaner for this, this mess here. It really 
does a number on. But this this sign is War Touches Solderly. Yeah, I'll have to get something special out here for that. This is um, a War Touches Solderly, and it talks about all the conflicts. Uh, the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812. It has some pictures from our living history, The Choice, that you can view on our YouTube. Um, Jay Hunter and Shamika Berry, who are rock stars. And it, it has some, some information about, uh, here's something on George... W. Briscoe, uh, alias Barnes, and something about David Briscoe, and this is uh, Shannon uh, and Stephen, who did the choice also, and then some primary documents you can see. So yeah, I'll have to get see if I can clean that with some something emollient. I'll have to get something out here besides just water. Because it's the tree that does this. You know, it's a very messy. It's a beautiful tree. They're old. Um, but uh, they are messy trees. Messy, messy. <laughs> okay. If you're just joining me, I'm, I'm Jeannie Pirtle from Historic Soderly. And uh, I'm doing a signage tour today. So thank you for joining us. All right. And here's one in front of the corn crib too. We we covered pretty much the corn crib already. So I'm just gonna go here. So this Soderly's early days. So so here's what I brought my rack for. You see, it's it's these outside things and these that's fresh. Uh, these indoor outdoor exhibits. They're they have to have you know because you come by and do something with them every once in a while unless it rains and gets it off but even then it needs to be cleaned so uh, one of the things uh, we did when we did a signage project see needs to be cleaned under here um, you see that so that needs to be cleaned all right so one of the things in our signage project we, uh, there were several on a signage committee we got of course a grant to do it and Sheila Sheila Herbert and um, it was Meredith Taylor it was me it was um, Nancy I think was on that committee to uh, remind me Meredith if I leave out someone and also of course anytime I talk about sign Dennis Kuhnd was involved because we get all the stuff and then he puts it together. And then it just takes a little, I think that's the best I can get it. So this early days at Soderly um, talks about from the beginning. So you just come from the visitor center, so you need to start at the beginning. The, uh, you can't learn all of Soderly history in one day. Don't even try. But every once in a while, you know, you add some information and pretty soon you've got it. So this talks about uh, James Bowles and his early 1699, 2000 acres, a, a map. Uh, one thing, Dennis Kuhn is also a wonderful ar artist also. And um, um, he, he does drawings and things. Um, he's a wonderful artist. So that's a plus too. Bonus. So it talks about the trade routes, Sodalry trade routes, of course, the tra transatlantic slave trade. So this is another uh, fortunate thing that happened. This project happened to, you know, we're doing our reinterpretation. So it all, uh, it all kind of melded together all at the same time. It was a lot of hard work, but it was really worth it. Um, so it talks about barrels or hogsheads of tobacco, it, and it gives an old map um, of Maryland and the Patuxent and the Chesapeake Bay. Inventory, here's another uh, tr transcribed inventory of the 1727. Boy, we use that document a lot for a lot of reasons, don't we? 
And then it has some interactives, you know, we're tr trying to be a little interactive. It's a little ch a challenging, but uh, flax plant and what the product is and um, so what slave cloth is and a little do you know what that is? And it gives the answer to mask. It's an expensive uh, textile that James Bowles and his wife would have had. Okay, so here's the bell. We learned that last week. So I, I, there's the 1757. Hopefully this is in the right place this week. You get to see it all. I'm going to stop here. Right, We're right across from the corn crib here. Right. Now this landscaping, let me talk about that. People will ask, there's a little marker back here behind this tree that's grown out now. People always ask, is that a grave? No, it's a land marker. And it wasn't always here. This was placed here by Herbert Satterley. In fact, all of this landscaping here, this is, this stone is um, a, a, a stone that is natural stone that is gathered, that was gathered or taken from other places right around here. But this, the way this, this uh, on the back here is it used to be a barn door that's changed all this all this landscaping here was Herbert Satterley and no it's not a grave it's a landmarker in case you want to know but I get asked that all the time um, and it looks like I need to take my clippers out here and trim this up just a bit so it doesn't overpower the sign. So this, see how it's kind of growing over? Yeah, a lot, a lot of maintenance to do. All right, Sodaly's economy. So this, this sign talks about uh, our crops that were grown. And of course, wheat um, was an important crop. And the wheat, part of the, part of the Colombian exchange, of course, wheat came Europe didn't it corn maize is from here all right love to love to study the Columbian exchange it's so fascinating um, so some old pictures of course vintage pictures about uh, the steamboat dock that used to be at Soderley a wheat field um, a repeat of some pictures um, who is this can somebody tell me who this is without looking at the name Guesses, guesses. Who is that? That is James Scriber in the 1950s. And talks about money and exchanges. So lots of information and it goes through a lot of history. It goes from colonial times to civil war uh, and after. And it even talks about the knot. So covering 300 years and that amount of words, that takes, that takes some skill. Okay. If you can tell your, if you can't tell your story in a short amount of words, uh, you're, um, you don't know your story well enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, I used to make, uh, my, my college students, um, write, about their homework assignment in one page double spaced every week and I wouldn't take any more if it, they gave me more than that I gave it back because you need to be able to be concise right and that's what signage is all about and it's hard because what do you leave out you know you can't cover every word so what do you leave out now this is brand new just put here so the Civil War trails people uh, called me and uh, Soderly and uh, wanted to make sure we were in compliance and have all the updates. So this is brand new. They came out right before the pandemic, basically a couple of weeks before, about a month before and put it out here. Um, so this is really cool. And it, we, we put it right here because it's not so close to the parking lot where people can just jump out of their car, go to this sign and check their box and leave. They actually have to come on site, but it's not hard to find. So it's right here next to Soderley's Economy. And it tells the whole Civil War story. And I, I won't get into it all today because that, that's a whole program. But yes, uh, Soderley's people during uh, the Civil War, the owners were Confederates. 
And then we had um, at least one uh, enslaved man, uh, George W. Barnes, alias Briscoe, and that was in the Company I, 7th U.S. Colored Troops. Uh, we had some um, Medal of Honor winners. And a but Butler Medal winner. So that's the Butler Medal. Okay. So you can look that up. What's the Butler Medal? So William H. Barnes and Sergeant James H. Harris, both from St. Mary's County, received the Medal of Honor for Bravery at the Battle of Newmarket Heights near Fort Harrison, Virginia, on September 29, 1864. So there's another person named Barnes, right? A lot of Barnes. Barnes also received the Solid Silver Butler Medal, one of the 200 that General Butler awarded to his bravest black troops and wore it in this photograph. Okay. Awesome. So Civil War Trails, um, I'll give them a plug. Thank you very much. You can download the app and go visit Civil War Trails and Sodomy, of course, is part of that trail too. Okay. So if you didn't know, I'm going to I'm going to be going down the rolling road a different way today. So let me pick up my pace in walking so we don't waste too much time. Uh, if you're just joining us, I'm Jeannie Pearl from Historic Sodderly, and we're doing a Facebook Live, uh, and we're talking about our interpretive signage today. Cedar. That's a red cedar tree. Old, old. Another large southern catalpa tree right here. A lot of our benches were made out of wood that was uh, fallen from Hurricane Irene. So that was a good use of the wood. Went back on solderly. We like that. Okay, I'm coming up here to the fence. You can see the house, hopefully in the right direction. And we're right here. Uh, and this is dwellings and outbuildings. I'm gonna get my little, little, uh, make sure you can see that. Wipe it down a little bit. Yeah. It's a good nest, it's a good place for birds to stop. If, so sometimes you have to get out here and wipe it down. Okay, so this talks about our dwellings and outbuildings. So it, it gives a little overview of what kind of buildings are historic and how old they are. Um, kind of gives some information about who built what. So here's an old picture. This is interesting. This is um, uh, the sheep feeding at the corn crib. So see, that's one that was part of corn crib was the, um, and sometimes uh, this is looking from the other way. So it's not me, it's not reversed. The photograph is looking from the other direction. But um, sheep feeding, um, this structure here was moved over there somewhere and used, um, uh, it's not where it's supposed to be anymore but it was used for bridles and saddle, saddles. This is 1906. And this is the wharf house. This is the uh, wharf house that was there during um, steamboat times. Can you see, can you see that one? Okay. And of course the barn system, the whole farm system that we were over there by the knot house. This is a barn that used to be, that's our barn now. And this was a barn that used to be there, but is no longer. You see that? And farm animals, this is familiar, same cabin, the way the warehouse looks today. The, um, the uh, customs house, or it, it was a stable. Okay, so it also talks about Cypress and uh, 
we don't have a piece of cypress out here now, but we are, there's a cypress swamp. The northernmost cypress swamp is near here, just a little bit up north in Calvert County. Okay. So I'm going to walk and we're going to see some more signage. A lot of people out walking their dogs today. I see Eve Love out there in the distance. Um, and uh, I saw David, I saw Mr. Moulton um, here walking his dog. She's probably talking to him because they're neighbors. So there are people walking out here. Okay, so this is the gatehouses. So this is South Gate House, North Gate House, and we have signage out here. So here's one house suddenly changed hands. So you, when somebody's standing here, look at their view, right? So that is that is strategic. It's on purpose. And Herbert Sadley in 1930 standing. This is the newer one, but he's standing by this gatehouse here. 1930 and then you you see the platers George Plater the second you see primary documents uh, you see the Briscoe family you see Walter and Emma line and and Elizabeth Rout see I know what I'm gonna look at that it's like it's like uh, needs dirt cleaning Okay. All right. So you'll find the answer in the childhood. So Elizabeth Rousby was a very young bride when she married George Plater III in 1764. Can you guess her age on her wedding day? And it tells me I have to go to the other sign. So we will do that. So there's a matching sign on the other side. This is where we have our schoolhouse. Um, I'll cover that another day. So this is childhood at Sodaway. So we, we put, the, this is another strategic choice, putting this where a lot of our school children that come on site are gonna visit. So they're gonna, their parents and people on site are gonna visit. Um, it gives the rules that George Washington put out. Okay, and it gives, this is, who is this? Who's this, these cuties? That's Bernard and Donald Barber. 1959. Mm -hmm. And this is a class of school children from Sodaly School. Now, uh, the Kashners, the last Briscoe owners, they gave some property to build a school for white children Remember what year we're talking about, 1918. And it, it's the building's still standing. It's a residence now, but it's right at, on um, Steerhorn Neck Road at the entrance to the right. It's still there. So um, uh, we, we, have, we can identify a few people in there, but every once in a while somebody will tell me another one. So when, when they do, I write that down. Here's the Satterley children, of course, with an African woman we have identified as Harriet Barber. You see that? Of course, what they would have been studying in the day. This is Eleanor Satterley and friends with Eleanor's nurse, Adelaide Orr in 1910. How do I know her name? Well, she's on the census in New York. And the Satterleys brought their Irish and German immigrant uh, servants with them when they came to visit Sodderley. That's how I know. Okay, that's Betty Eckert as a baby. She uh, was uh, a granddaughter of the Callis family that ran the Wharf House. And so it, it, it tells about uh, who's educated, why, what they learn. And one of the things that we talk about in the schoolhouse is there's different ways to learn. So just because George 
uh, an enslaved boy in um, the 19th century would be standing out here waiting to bring wood or whatever to wait on the the uh, people, the children in the in the girls' school. What what's he doing out there? Well, he's listening, right? And then he's going back home and learning how to write, do music, whatever they're learning. So that uh, it, you can teach you can teach perspective in very young children. Um, children and very young can learn that not everybody gets treated the same way. So that's where you start to teach this history and it can start very young. There's another tree sign. Of course the house you can see. Ah, da, da, da. But we're going to walk over here to the signage in front of the house. Somebody got their mower out which is okay. We'll deal with it, right? We can we can handle it. I'm Jeannie Pearl, and welcome. If you're just joining us, this is um, the big picture, and I'm doing a sign tour, sign interpretive signage tour today. So you got roses on the rose arbor, all blooming. Isn't that nice? Pretty garden guild, garden guild. So strategic. So this is where if you have a house tour, you would stop, right? There's benches under the tree. There's some interpretive signage here and you're looking at the house. So let's, um, let's look at this one, but this one needs some work, right? We've got uh, some organic matter here. Of course, a little tree drippage that will take something else to get it off. Of course, the underneath is always dirty when you come out here. We'll do the best we can today. I couldn't bring my bucket with me. I can't carry everything, so I'll take care of it later. All right, so this is visitors and correspondence. Can you see? Visitors and correspondence. Uh, so these are letters, primary documents of people that visited the house. Uh, we do have, not very many, but we do have um, letters. But not very many. And we talk about manners and how, there's a lot of stress. If you're an elite woman, there's a lot of stress and you have to do everything right because you could lose your status in society so fast um, if you if you weren't proven you were educated and people taught you proper manners not just please and thank you um, this was there was there there's a whole page of, of something I found how to open a gift um, I mean it's, it gets ridiculous you think of the French you know right before the revolution and how their rituals got you know out of hand um, uh, it's kind of like that not probably not that extreme in America but there it's there mail it says mail moves slowly in the 17th and 18th centuries there were few good roads reaching plantation can you guess by what method President Washington's letter could have reached Colonel Fitzhugh Colonel Fitzhugh was uh, Elizabeth Raspy played her stepfather, and it says, correspondence depended on innkeepers, private mail services, trusted associates, and friends to carry mail. Sheriff constables often delivered mail from high-ranking officials. So we're a little spoiled in that regard today, although it costs more. All right, yeah, that needs some, something else, but I don't have that with me today. So you see, um, and you see the markers that I showed you in the rain the other day. All right, I'm gonna go toward the garden. A lot of birds. 
So this talks about the garden. It has some more pictures about plants and beautiful pictures. And Eleanor and Mabel sat only with their dog Shep at the garden in 19, Sundial in 1910. Who's this? This is Walter Barber. And this is an old picture of Sodderley's house. Yes, that's the way it looked in 1906. And how, how different levels of gardening. Today's gardens are ornamental in content and the Garden Guild uh, continues, a totally volunteer organization continues to do it. So I'm gonna walk and see how the peonies or peonies as my mother called it. Somebody's out here mowing. I think it's, I don't know who it is yet. Oh, look at the poppies. Oh, wait, I have to stop and show you this. Oh, this view is awesome. This May is almost the best time to get your beautiful views. I mean, those are so pretty. All right, let me try to show you how pretty that is. Ooh, a picture. I have a picture my sister came a long time ago in Memorial Day weekend and I still you still see that photograph all over our marketing because it's so pretty but it was taken about this time of year nice huh okay poppies a lot of things growing If you're just joining us, I'm doing a signage tour, but we're taking a little detour to the garden because I want to pick something over here. Don't tell anybody, but I'm gonna use it for a good purpose. See the peonies, they're starting, I'll get closer. They're starting to, um, the peonies, I'm sorry, the peonies, they are starting to uh, really bloom out. This is the time of year when they bloom not quite there but this wall will be white and pink by the time it's done let me get up here closer see 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 pretty look at that pretty nice Nice. So I'm not sure. There's witnesses, so I'm not sure if I need to pick it right now because they're not quite bloomed out. But th they don't last long, so they encourage you know you can pick a few uh, because they, they don't once they bloom they do not last long. So, don't worry about it. You know, don't chop down the whole plant, but you know what I mean. So, very pretty, very pretty. Here's one that looks like it's, it's in the back. I'm going to try this. All right, can you keep this secret? Can you keep my secret? All right, I'm going to put down my gear here. I'm going to look at this one. Look. I love that one. Look. I didn't carry scissors, so I'm just going to tear it. There. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Look at that one. Pretty. All right. I'm going to take that with me. There's a reason I picked it. I'm sorry. It won't let me turn my camera. There's a way to do that, I know, but it won't let me. So. Okay. So I think we're ready to go this way. I'm going to go to the river side of the house where there's some more signage. And then we'll walk down to the water today. So thank you for joining me. If you're just joining me, I'm doing a signage tour. A little bonus down to the water.
So you, when you're out here a lot, you start seeing photographs in your head. Uh, yeah, this is a nice picture, right? This is a nice picture. Love that. Love that. Pretty. So let's just walk right down the middle of it. How about that? Maybe I can't get this right so you can see all the pretty. Like I said, when my grandkids come here in the summer, there's a sea of butterflies in here. They love it. So this old tree, they keep they keep nursing it. It's been here a long time. <laughs> nice. I think those are gardenias, right? Am I right about that? See, I can't be an expert on everything, folks. Sorry. <laughs> I, I see the lamb's ear there. Do you see the lamb's ear and the gardenias? There you go. Can you see that? All right. So we're going to go back. We're in the um, river side of the house on the what we call the portico because I'm going to show you some different signs. Then we're going to walk down, see the rest of the signage, and then go take a, a walk to the water. You see that? I'm trying to hold my... This is a challenge, folks. A lot of places, like I noticed, a lot of places do these live videos, but they have someone there holding the camera for them. And it really looks formal because they've got more people doing it, you know. they got a bigger staff. they got more money. they got equipment. they got to have all that the fancy stuff, which I, I think that's great. But that mine does not look formal. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot. Let's look at this sign. This is the kitchen that we that we did last week. Um, or two weeks ago. In the rain. So here's one about the culinary traditions. So it does talk about gardening. That's a we got a, a colonial kitchen garden. Unfortunately, we don't have a colonial kitchen on at Sodderley. But some of our friends in London Town do, and they sent us a picture. Can you see that? So London Town, Historic London Town, thank you. Our smokehouse, that's Mud Stevens. Can you see them? Yeah. Turkeys. Charles Knott with the strawberries. Okay, can you see that? And then how the the... This is the larder, and so um, this is this is the uh, this is the larder. So it, um, can we see? Yeah, this is the larder. I see it. So this is the larder, and um, it's where Mabel had her first gift shop. Okay. It tells me my battery's running low, so just like my car, I know how to judge that. But I'm going to move on. So that this is I'm right on the riverside of the of the house. So the, this is the spinning cottage. If you're just joining me, you can go back to the beginning when this is over. It'll be recorded. We're doing a signage tour. All right, so we had uh, a makeshift Civil War trail, so I'm going to replace that with uh, something about UNESCO. What do you think? Uh, we don't need that one anymore. But this is our Star Spangled Banner Trail. War hits home. It talks about the uh, when uh, we had 49 enslaved people, families and all, that uh, left Sodderley with and joined the British, went with the British, and some of them ended up in Nova Scotia. So we are in the Star Spangled Banner Historic Trail, right? I see some foreign matter over there, so I'm gonna, I've got more things to carry now. We'll see how I do. 
but this is the kind of thing you, when you come see you know don't don't be too judgmental I mean we could have just cleaned this and then a birdie comes by so it's outside folks National Park Service so we got lots of partners Star Spangled Banner National Park Service this is uh, one of their trails and we're part of it War of 1812 so like War of 1812 mania yes I remember <laughs> all right we left it better than we found it we're gonna skip that one because that's a civil war that needs to be replaced and like I said I think what I'm gonna do what do you think another poll I, th I don't have anything about UNESCO itself and how we relate to it Ooh, they just they just uh, did the straw out here see they mowed it down um, so we, um, uh, what do you think? Do you think that would be a good place for it? Uh, I'm trying to think of how, you know, there's a big process. If you want to put a new one that costs more money for stand, I could reuse the stand and put it for UNESCO. What do you think? Give me, yeah, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me what you think. I need your input. Okay, you know where we are. We're down here by the slave cabin. And there is a sign, an interpretive sign down here, but it's about, and I think I covered it before, so I'm not gonna recover it, but it, it does talk about, you know, the building itself. Uh, when it was built, its dimensions, how it was restored. So it's over there on the rolling road on your way to the, the slave cabin. So I'm going to come down here and get on the road. We're going to pass our, see our pretty new, newly planted trees. They're probably a couple years old now. Pretty. It goes down and crosses over. It used to be the wharf road. They used to butcher hogs down here. Okay. And then we have, of course, our, and our uh, middle passage marker. So we're gonna stop just a second moment and look at it and think. Pretty the flowers are coming out, the wild ones, we love that. So a little a little trip down to the water. It's um, not too bad. Now you're gonna have a little issue if um, we have mulch, okay? So right now so it's a little hard. It just depends, but special occasions we usually get a golf cart so everybody's good. You know, we we'll give you a ride down here. On special occasions we realize it's hard I haven't shown you so we do one environmental stop here so if you don't know we have all kinds of birds and wildlife but this is, uh, I'm gonna show you, try to show you our uh, eagle's nest. So at certain times of year, you don't wanna get, really get too close, but I'm gonna try to get up here and show you. Do you see it? Do you see the eagle's nest? It's very big. Let me try to get it. Very big. You see it? Yep. Still there. There's there's a couple of eagles nests on our site now. They do breed, and 
there's a territory. I'm not going to walk through the weeds. Um, the reason uh, I don't want unwanted guests on me tonight, so that's I'm not going to do that. Even though I did, did spray. Let's see, somebody's been out here harvesting this hay, so we'll use that hay. Uh, we will probably sell some, trade some, barter some. So, uh, in the old days, this would have all been planted in crop of some sort. The tree line wouldn't have been there. We don't really cut down trees next to the tree line because we're trying to save the soil to go in, in the water. But this would have all been in grazing land or or um, crops in the old days. So if you're just joining me, um, I just did a sign tour and I'm gonna walk down to the water in Sodaly Creek a minute as long as my battery holds out. So if you have any questions, go ahead and write them down and you can either email me at education at .org or uh, Catherine Humphreys can answer most questions. So she can do it right there. She's standing by for any questions. Uh, I think potatoes went in there if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I'll try to hold my camera up and not down. So it's a nice little hike. Boy, it sure does. It's good for kids when they come here for school trips. To, boy, they get, they're tired when they get home because usually they run everywhere <laughs> or try to. And they're pretty wore out when they get home, which is good. They need to get outside, see some nature. So families, we're still open. Uh, you're welcome. You know, you can do your whole science lessons here. And if you're talking about um, the land, the water, plants, uh, nature, uh, just practice social distancing and you're good. We're still here. <laughs> Hear the birds, pretty. And one thing I've been doing at home is I'll watch it, doing more bird watching out my backyard. And uh, we get a lot of birds. We're just never, before we were never at home really to enjoy them. So now we're at home more. We get to see who's, who's out there. I always pick, don't wait shoes at Sodery, okay? I, I warn people about this all the time. Sodery has um, different kinds of terrain. It might be muddy, it might be wet, you might have to go up a hill, you might have, you don't know what you might have to do. Wear comfortable walking shoes that you don't mind getting dirty. That's what I always say. Don't wear pretty shoes. Wear Sodery shoes. And it helps we have to train the kids to pick their feet up when they walk because they always want to drag their feet and make as much noise as they can. But they'll see wildlife if they're quieter. So that's what we try to, to do. I still have some air traffic. Oh, I'm coming up on the water. Can you see that? Sodery Creek. I'm smelling my peonies or peonias. I'm thinking about my mama. She had them in her front yard when we were growing up. It covered the, the well water intake thing. <laughs> so it was doing double duty. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty out here today. It is gorgeous. Um, this is up here in this tree. I don't know whether you can see it or not. I'll try to point my camera in the right direction. 
Can you see that? It has a, let's see, where is it? It's kind of shady right here. So there is a bat box here. There is a box that a, uh, for her gold, her gold star uh, rank in Girl Scout, she made bat boxes. So that is a house for bats, and that's number one. So there's more than one, right? So that's cool. So scouts do a lot of projects around here. Um, I've got, um, I had an inquiry just the other day. Somebody wants to do their Eagle Scouts. So Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, love them, love them. They do a lot of good work. So this is really nice down here right now. Um, the only thing missing is our fifth graders who learn to canoe in here. Uh, there, they actually go down by the pier on the other side of this peninsula. Uh, and here's the, I'll show you, this is the, the dock right here that they canoe off of, goes it out to the Patuxent River. Let me try to do that. Can you see? Isn't that lovely? Oh, it's a beautiful spot. Beautiful. And I like it when the leaves are grown out. You can't really see anything but leaves on the other side. I like that. So it actually is going to let me today go down here next to the water. It's a little muddy uh, right there, but I'm going to give it a try because I want to do something. So this always reminds me too of our first middle passage ceremony that was held down near here by the creek and people walked down in 2012. I always remember. So I'm going to try to get as close as I can without getting too muddy. Um, but you can see the clam. You can see wildlife in the water. It's very clear right now. You can see clam shells. Critters love to eat here. They love it, love it, love it. Um, it's like I said, it's a little muddy the farther I go here. There's a little enclave over there that has some oyster shell or clam shell. But the reason I want to get close, uh, closer. Yes, I know my battery's low. Okay. So what I'm going to do to end it, and thank you for joining me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw, throw my, put my other stuff down. And I'm going to throw my flower right here, isn't it beautiful? And I'm going to toss it out into the water to remember those that lived at Sodderley, both enslaved and free, that came on the boat. Um, and this would have been deeper and they would have parked the boat closer right out there, close to the house. So I'm going to throw my flower out and then I'm going to stick around for a few minutes. Um, but thank you for joining me and please um, join me again next Thursday at 2 p.m.